Welcome, weary traveller, to the world of tomorrow. In this blissful future, PC parts are now not quite plentiful, but miners are indeed making minuscule money, and scalpers have switched strategies. The second-hand market is healthier than it's been in almost two years, which is great, because the new market still sucks. Once again, R9290X owners, or potential owners, this one's for you. Chances are, if you subscribe to my channel, you saw my 2021 video on the R9290X. It was my 11th video, and while my style hasn't changed that much in a year and a half, my test platform and methodology have. Last year's £300 budget test platform has been traded up for a £500 model, with 6 cores and 16 gigs of RAM, but for the most part, owners of older quad cores shouldn't see a huge difference. To make sure I'm getting driver updates for the latest games, I'm testing the R9290X with Nimei's modded drivers. These are optional for the most part, but in games like Halo Infinite, the difference between using official AMD drivers and Nimei's versions is pretty enormous. The card itself is an ASUS Direct Copper 2 version, which I've repasted and applied a custom fan curve to in an ultimately vain attempt to keep things cool. If you've seen my R9290 video, there's not a huge amount new to say about God of War's native performance. The 290X manages an eminently playable 52fps on average at 1080 original, less than one frame faster than the non-X card. The biggest difference between this video and the last is that the game has changed, a little. The original implementation of AMD FSR has been updated to version 2, using temporal upscaling rather than spatial. While this has a performance impact, the previous version could hit 60fps averages at the Ultra presets, with this one needing dropping to quality, the loss of detail from using version 2 is much less than using version 1. Final Fantasy VII Remake, in case I haven't mentioned this before, is a bit of a mess for benchmarking. Enabling the 120fps cap means the game can run at anything up to 120fps, depending on how powerful the GPU is. Some of the time. Other times the game acts like you turned on the 60fps cap instead, hence why the R9290X scores an average of around 60fps, whereas the 290, on a whim, scored over 60fps. This isn't because the 290 is the better card, just that for some reason on that day with that driver and that GPU, the game decided it wanted to cap at 60 this time. Like with many other 4GB cards, this game doesn't handle cutscenes well, and dropping shadows and or textures to the low setting might be a good idea to help them run smoother. I actually did a whole video on Elden Ring, testing it using the R9 290 at various settings, and I don't think the 290X is going to be different enough to warrant redoing all those tests. I benchmarked instead at 1080 high, with textures and shadows turned up to maximum, and the game seemed perfectly content with this, averaging 39 FPS. The 290 couldn't hit 60 or even 50 FPS at 1080, and the 290X isn't going to do that either. Dropping to 720 might help if 60fps is your pain point, but in that case you might want to investigate something like the lossless scaling app to try and enable FSR. I have good news and bad news about Forza Horizon 5. On the positive front, thanks to commenter Retapitch, I've been made aware that there's a fix for the alpha channel glitch on older AMD cards. Turning on the recently added TAA setting not only does wonders for jagged edges, but also magically restores the alpha channels on license plates, decals and 2D crowd sprites. Ok, now the bad news. Turning on TAA costs the GPU about 20% of its performance. At 1080 high without TAA the game runs just short of 50fps, within half a frame of the non-X card for reference. Turning TAA on cuts that to about 40. Of course. This is just the built-in benchmark, and in general gameplay, the card runs substantially faster, but the benchmark does give a worst case scenario. Be ye forewarned. As I mentioned at the top of the video, I'm using Nimei's modded drivers in this review, as it's what I'd recommend anyone using an older GCN card, like the 290X, should do in 2022. If you don't want to use these drivers, it's probably not going to make a huge difference in many games. 
except for Halo Infinite. This is the one game I found in my testing at the beginning of the year that is borderline unplayable on official legacy drivers, but a substantially better experience with Nimes. Compared to the regular R9 290, the 290X comes in about 10% higher. Alas, at 1080 low settings, this is still only about 34 FPS on average in open world sections of the game, and turning on the 30 FPS minimum cap only adds a couple more frames to that score. Since I last looked at this card in Cyberpunk 2077, the game has seen tons of patches to fix issues and improve performance. Alas, its last patch also revised what is actually meant by medium settings, so some of the good work done in patch 1.5 has been undone in patch 1.6. This video took a while to make, and my initial tests were done pre-1.6 patch. For what it's worth, the pre-patch score was 40 FPS at 1080 with the medium preset, whereas post-patch it's dropped to 32. You should be able to manually adjust settings in order to return it back to 40 FPS, but the quickest way of doing so is to enable FSR quality. Rainbow Six Extraction is a curious case of a game that sees a massive step down on the 290X compared to the 290. It's not even close, with 1080 high scoring just 72 FPS on average and 51 FPS minimum, compared to 80 and 56 on the 290 when I tested it about six months earlier. I can only assume this is related to drivers, but alas, the Nimes 22.1.2 set is no longer available to download for comparison. Even an overclock to 1050MHz core and 1400MHz VRAM only lifts it by a couple of frames. Splitgate's performance is much more in line with what I would expect from this category of card, averaging 170 FPS at 1080 Epic settings. Although esports shooters like this can be quite sensitive to lower frame rates, this is definitely enough for a competitive experience, and great for anyone who wants to pair a 290X with a cheap 1080 high refresh display. It's not quite possible to reach a constant 60fps in Call of Duty Vanguard without resorting to low quality settings and upscaling. Averages across three games at 1080 medium came to over 80fps, but dipped into the 40s at the low end. Adding FSR quality keeps minimums above the 60 mark and lifts the average close to 100 FPS, though I find regular FSR does make identifying targets a bit of a nause. As I should have come to expect by now, Fortnite runs just brilliantly on the 290X. At 1080 competitive settings using DX12, the average is a superb 159 FPS. 1% lows are less impressive, but if you're a regular to benchmarking videos or Fortnite in general, you'll know that it's notorious for poor frame pacing and stutter. This is more egregious at 1080 high with epic view distance, as while the average is a very acceptable 64 FPS, the 1% lows are now in the low 30s. At 1080 low and 4GB textures, the R9 290X breezes through Apex Legends, no resolution drops needed. 100 FPS might not quite max out your 144Hz monitor, but if you're on a tight budget or holding on to your old 290X until the next generation of cards comes out, in my opinion, this is a pretty playable experience. Call of Duty Warzone hasn't exactly been my dearest friend while I've been benchmarking GPUs. The year and a half since I started the original Tales from the Scalper Pandemic series has seen any number of performance-crushing updates. Well, in something of a surprising turn of events, the FPS needle for the R9 290X has barely moved from Feb 21. At 1080 low, the card can manage a little over 80 FPS on average, almost identical to last year's score. 1% scores are a little below the 60fps mark, which is a downgrade from last year, but is kind of par for the course in online shooters these days. The Radeon R9 290X exists in a weird place. As I write this, the going rate for the 2013 AMD flagship card is down to about £75 to £85. Pounds. For that price, it means it's going up against used cards like the GTX 970 and 4GB RX 480, and thanks to spiralling energy prices, the greater efficiency of those newer cards makes them far more attractive alternatives. Although the 290X stands its ground when compared to those cards for raw performance, 
It does so while gulping down 300 watts of power, potentially doubling the cost of the card in just a year. It also loses out on performance to the RX 6500 XT in the majority of titles, though that card has its own issues that I won't get into yet again. To sum up my feelings then, I guess you probably shouldn't buy one of these, especially if you can get a Maxwell, Polaris or RDNA card for a similar price. If you're still holding on to one, either out of nostalgia or lack of better options, you should be happy to know that, for the ninth year in a row, your card is still holding on, if only barely. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.